Welcome back, you lovely Marvels. Hi, Dana. Good morning. Hey, good morning. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. I am great today. Thank you so much. Um, we are about to talk about one of our favorite topics, mm -hmm. and it's not and, Diet Coke. And probably a lot of other people's favorite topic, because we know that neurodiverse, neurodiverse people love Diet Coke, but also animals. <laughs> animals. Animals. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm going to, my animal is napping, but I don't oh. think he'd mind. He does help okay. me out in therapy. He's lovely. Oh, awesome. Oh, he's going to be he's, all nappy. That's awesome. I mean, oh, look, oh my look, God. He's so cute. Stanley. Look at this. Look at this little. So, for those of you, for those of you, this is um, Stanley, the Springer oh Spaniel. He's so um, tired. His, his, look at <laughs> his name is Stanley. Would you Would you like to know why? Yeah, we named why our is dog his Stanley? Name Stanley. Yes, please. Well, for two two reasons. First of all, Stanley Cup, duh, Lord oh, Stanley. Oh yes, Hot because Cassie. you know of our Canadian of our Canadian That's heritage. Awesome. Yeah. But Stan Lee. Oh, my of, God. See? Perfect. So, so we're so, look at how smart we are. Look at his are. face. He's like, oh, God, mom's telling everybody about my name. Oh, I know. <laughs> look at his thought bubble. Look at his thought bubble. I will say Stan Lee does help me out in therapy a lot. He often sits and um, oh, is my Oh, my God, that look. That's is his co-pilot and uh, my co-pilot and um he often uh helps out in you know he's he holds secrets he he's understands confidentiality yep um but yep. some of my clients are more comfortable talking to stanley they can tell him yeah. they can tell him the the hard stuff yeah when i had our lots dog, of opinions ella yeah. little maltapu she did co-therapy with me and she it was yeah. amazing she would be sleeping in a dead sleep in her bed and all of a sudden she'd pop up she could tell when someone needed something and she'd jump up yeah. on the couch with them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they know. Yeah. Um, they they know. It. So yeah. it's so lovely. Um, yeah. but yes, the the power, the power of animals. And I I mean, I I think we would have a cat if we some of my family members weren't so deathly allergic, allergic to them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, there's been a lot of research on just human animal bond. I mean, in general, there's a giant, huge uh plethora of literature on that that I know yeah. about from my, my past days of vet tech. Um, but the, there is quite a bit of literature also on pets and neurodiverse folks in terms of what it does for us. And a lot of it is, I really do think that there's a, um, there's a, there's a non worded connection that a lot of people mm -hmm. can pick up with animals in general, but I have yet to meet a neurodiverse person who doesn't have that. Like they'll say, they may say they have allergies, but I still, I feel like I can connect with that animal in some ways, you know, horses, cats, dogs. I, I follow this one, um, um, it's a rescue, I think, on TikTok that rescues cows. And you think cows, mm -hmm. they're the biggest snuggle bugs. They'll show them like in their, their giant heads in their lap and they're petting them and mm -hmm. the cows like, uh, they're like big puppies, you know? So yeah. that's, I do think that that, sense of you know what's going on internally i think that we have like this uh developed sixth sense to be able to pick up on those things that a lot of other people don't yeah. and animals tend to be just so um what's the word i'm looking for they're unconditional right they just tend to be there for you they can really pick up on mood states like we can but they can't speak and sometimes we can't speak when we've picked up on a mood state we can't name it and so there does tend to be some of that connection there that people talk about being really profound, right? That sense yeah. of that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that that unconditional love is mm -hmm. so great. And, you know, you and I have spoken about this as owning pets as a as a net positive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're a lot of work. Because <laughs> they're a lot of work and they're a lot of money. Um, yeah. You know, if you want to, it's not, you know, the initial purchase of your animal. I mean, if you do purchase yeah. your animal, that if is. You but, rescue. Um, but, yeah. 
Yeah, but it vet, it, vet care. Yeah. Vet care, maintenance, food. I mean, yeah. uh, and then like for dogs, you know, they like their routines. And so, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's, it's important to walk and do yeah. the things that they need to do. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. and me, I think that's the thing you, that it, when you're first starting that out in your, and your routine could change if you get an animal, Yeah, that can be a real disruption to folks and it takes a while to get into that routine, you know, not just for you to know the new routine, but for the animal to kind of get in sync with you. Yeah. And if you've got a young animal, you know, there's a lot of unpredictability, you know, housebreaking if you've got a dog and, you know, climbing up the drapes if you get a kitty. <laughs> I see these people, that, that one account had this baby cow in her house and the house was, everything was white. And all I could think of is, oh my God, because cows can't control themselves, but maybe she had a little diaper on them. I don't know. But that kind of stuff can be like a, a, a shift to the environment when you first get one. And then like when we lost our little dog, it was a shift to the environment. It was weird. It's, I mean, we'll still yeah. talk about feeling her presence sometimes. Yeah. But we just notice these little things that you don't notice every day. Like after she was gone, she... Our dog ended up, we lose, lost her to canine dementia. So it's like, you know, doggy Alzheimer's, which was awful the last year. But she liked to lay in her dog bed in the kitchen, but she could still see us in the family room. And how much we'd lean over to make sure she was still in there. We kept doing that for like weeks. It's like, oh my God, I'm still doing it. I'm still doing it. So you don't realize, I think sometimes, how connected you are until the animal isn't there or they're gone for some reason you realize all these like literal body movements that you make during the day you're in sync with that animal right in addition to there being tons of research about how good they are for our mental health you know that's been proven time and time again that they lower anxiety they help with depression and they expand lifespans for humans humans tend to live longer than have pets Oh yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if Stanley is gone because maybe he's, you know, we we've been away and and you know he's or away the or something, right, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And I come home. It's all you're right, Dana. And I think that's what makes the loss of a, of an animal so deep. Yeah. And like, there's such a sting to it because it's all the little motions in the day that remind you of mm-hmm. them being gone. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I think about my life and I have really lived with some kind of animal for most of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I yeah, really haven't too. been without an animal for, for most of my life. And mm-hmm. when I was a teen, I had a cat and a dog, many birds and um, a lop-eared bunny and fish. Oh, like, uh-huh, uh-huh. We had a lot of animals, um, but I've always had a dog. Yeah. You oh, know. gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Always. I've always had a dog. And um, mo- I will say most of my clients have cats. Oh, okay. And Little, um, you know, give them a litter box and yeah, and forget about them for a while. Yeah. But they're hilarious. Like they're like, I feel like I, I saw this meme once and it's like a dog. It said, oh, you know, something along the lines of like, oh, you're feeding me. I love you so much you know, yeah. you're wonderful. And then you, uh, there's a, and then the, the next picture, the next frame is like this owner feeding a cat and like the cat's like, um, you better like, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm your master. Right. Yeah. It's about my favorite time. one is dogs have owners, cats have staff. <laughs> and that, that sort of sums it up right there. Right. I mean, it really, <laughs> yeah. Which is funny because cats get a little bit of a bad ride. I had I've had cats for many many years. I don't anymore, and I've developed allergies to them. But I did have them, um, and they they have personalities and like snuggliness to them. But it's just more subtle. Yeah. And I think you have to like yeah. be someone that lives with the cat to really understand that. And even you mentioned yeah. fish. I had fish for a while. I'd come in the room and they'd come swimming to the front of the tank, and I'm like, oh my god, it's a fish, and they know I'm here. This is really weird. Yes. I, I had a rat once that I saved as a little teeny rat from the, it was in a pet store. They were feeding it to this gigantic toad and I rescued it. My sister's so funny. She's like, you know, as soon as you leave, they're just going to put another baby rat in there. Right. I'm like, yeah, but this one, I want to save this one. <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you steal it? Tina? No, no, I paid for it. Store? I had him for, I had him for like seven oh. years or so. Yeah. Nero. He was great. He was awesome. I put him in one of those little balls and he'd run around the apartment and. 
yeah, it's funny. My landlord would let me have two cats and a rat, but not a dog. So a lot of people can have cats because their apartments will let them have a cat, but not yeah. a dog for some strange, bizarre reason. Um, yeah. But like a lot of the, a lot of animal um, therapies have been done with horses, right? I mean, that was yep. sort of the original animal therapy, working with handicapped kids and so on, disabled kids. Um, and then now there, there's tons of service dogs that like autistic folks get, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they're doing a lot of training with dogs for folks that have combat trauma who yep. haven't been able to leave the house and now can with, with service dogs. And so there really is there just a, this amazing bond. A little bit of history too. I mean, we see we see statues of pet cats in like Egyptian tombs and things like that. So we know they were around, but more over they were probably part of that culture where they were revered, right? Which is yeah. interesting. And dogs, we I, th I think I read an article um, a couple of years ago that originally we thought that that bond had forged between like wolves and people 20,000 years ago or so. And they found evidence that it was more like 40 or 50,000 years ago. So it goes back way further. And then there are studies too that will show that dogs understand a lot more uh, human language than we thought before, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that dogs that are, we consider smart. I mean, there are some dogs that are smarter than others. I apologize to everybody who knows their dog is the smartest, but, um, Working breeds tend to be smarter. So like the, the, the stereotypical smartest dog is a border collie, right? These are the ones that know all those commands and do all the cool stuff with sheep and everything else. Um, but they've done studies where they've taught names of toys to those dogs and they can go retrieve the actual toy. And I think they, they approximate them at a, between a sec, uh, two and three year old child in terms of intelligence, right? Yep. But even then, I mean, dogs, they're around us all the time. Why wouldn't they learn some of our actual language when we're saying things? And so and they can pick up on that, right? Um, oh, and yeah. that cats m may do that, but we've had cats domesticated a lot less time than we've domesticated dogs. So that's a little bit of the difference. And maybe some of the aloofness that cats have, they're literally not as domesticated as dogs are, right? And I love the the memes that are like, or the videos on TikTok that will come up, you know, reasons my dog would never survive in the wild. And it's usually like this little teacup poodle that's got like the little coats and, and don't, I love doing that kind of stuff. But they're like, yeah, one day without food and, you know, they'd starve to death. And But a cat, even a house cat, if it had to be outside, it probably could survive for a while. You know, they're just a little more wild in that way. Probably get hit yeah. by a car, but it would probably survive for a while because it wouldn't be street smart that way. Yeah. But that there nonetheless, there are these really profound um bonds that people can form with animals, right? And then when you lose one, oh my God. It's awful. We haven't gotten another one yet. We lost Ella in 2019 because it, one of the main reasons we've waited so long is because it was so hard losing her. Yeah. Right. I I can still remember just like that heavy heaving, sobbing. I I, yeah. I told myself when I'm alone, I'm gonna let myself cry as much as possible. And that went on for a month or two. Every time yeah. I was alone, I, <gasps> that kind of crying, you know? I know yeah. that if I let myself do that, I'll move through it. I've had enough therapy to know that. But yeah. I think, especially for dogs, because I've had dogs and cats, and when I lost my cats, it was awful. You know, I'm not minimizing that. But dogs are so dependent on us. They're so needy, right? They can't, they can't do anything without us. And I think that that pulls more of like a, a paternal or maternal part of us. We feel kind of responsible for them. So the bond it can be just a little bit different than it is with other animals for oh, most people, I, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, you know, my, I, I've shared um, on our podcast how anxious Stanley is. Yeah. Um, and I do really feel like that's part of, his early, early upbringing. We didn't mm. get him till he was eight months. Um, oh, yeah. So yeah. a little bit later than, you know, um, but I, we had, we had lost our other Springer pretty suddenly. Um, and, you know, I just, I didn't last long. And, and my family knows this, like I don't last long without a dog. Yeah. So I was like on the search for a Springer and, um, and he was of course the runt and the last one in the litter. Aww. And, you know, and I, as I figured out more and more of his history, um, 
you know, it's like complex trauma, <laughs> complex <laughs> trauma. But you know, he was he was ra- like he was yeah, owned yeah. by a breeder who like showed showed dogs for a living, yeah, and yeah. so he was just kenneled with like 15, oh, 20 yeah. dogs. Yeah. And so, like, he eats – he eats like he's he's never going to eat again. Right, right. Uh, yeah. And he still does that to this day. Yeah. But he's just awful alone. He's awesome yeah. when someone's here and he's yeah. awful alone. He never and had so, a long time. He doesn't know how I to mean, deal with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, I think he's getting better, but, you know, he is four and a half. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. We've it, had him for a, four and a half years. There's a whole trend on TikTok, too, where it says, I got a dog to help with my anxiety. And then yeah. here's my anxious dog. I have a dog yeah. who's more anxious. Than me. <laughs> He's so anxious. Like I was like, how I like I you know I've nailed down routines. I've nailed down uh, high quality food. I've nailed yeah. down predictability. I mean, I've nailed down all the things, right? I've modified the environment, yeah. Yeah. and now it's like I'm just like, how about a Xanax? Like I, I don't know. Yeah. Like yeah, you know, just, just just take the edge off for the baby. But it brings a, it, for those of you who have pets or are thinking about getting pets. I mean, like for me, um, I could rescue, but it's hard to find a hypoallergenic rescue dog. I mean, they're almost. I would I'd love to get a pit bull. I love pit bulls, but I'm definitely allergic to them. <laughs> and there's a ton of them. And in, in, but some people actually do need to buy dogs or get them from a breeder, right? So um, purebred dogs. Keep in mind, those have been selectively bred also for a really long time for specific characteristics. Yeah. So the aforementioned Border Collie that I mentioned, this is not an apartment dog. This is a dog that has to be working almost all day, all the time. Um, someone I work with, they have a um, Boston Terrier. And Terriers in general are working dogs. They have very specific tasks. They're kind of spazzy. And I say that in a loving way. They're like, what do I do now? What do I do? That, that's what I mean by that. Um, he said that that dog once went, they went to a dog park and that dog ran so much because she was so excited to run with the other dogs. She got to the point where her legs were giving out on her. Her muscles had no more energy and she still couldn't, they had to, they had to pick her up and carry her out or she would have, God knows what she would have done. And I was like, that's a terrier. So yeah. when people say to me, oh, I'm gone a lot and I'm going to get this, you know, I'm going to get a terrier. And I'm like, oh God, please don't do that. So if you have to get it, if you're going to get a, a, the reason I brought this up is you mentioned Stanley, who's a, a purebred, you have to look into that's temperament, right? Yeah. So you're, yes, he had all these experiences, but also spaniels are working dogs and, and those dogs tend to be a little more, what we'd say, high strong, right? And they get bored easily. So like when you're gone and there isn't someone there to, you know, sort of, he knows he's okay. So some breeds will come with that inherently. And then you'll, within the breeds, you'll always have some that are like super chill or some that are super hyper. Um, but you need to do your research if you need to get a purebred dog for whatever reason they're doing that. Because they have certain Yeah, I agreed. And I mean, that goes back to something that we talk about a lot, um, which is self-awareness, right? Like yeah, what, yeah. What, what do you need and what are you able to provide? What are you able yeah. to give? Yeah. And um, you know, I find like that entry point, like that cat entry point for mm-hmm. a lot of my clients, it makes having a pet really attainable and accessible yeah. to them yes. because it's a, a lot easier to have a cat. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, that to me is, is, is so great because I, there's not really a day that goes by where we don't talk about someone's animal. You know, yeah. or the animal inevitably shows up in session. Like, you know, it's yeah. like if we're doing telehealth, you know, sure, cats sure. always show, dogs oh, always show to session. Yeah. yeah. They love it. Like, yeah. you know, I've got like tails and faces and, <laughs> you know, blocking cameras and it's hilarious. Like they, I you love know, seeing they that. Know. I'm like, they're Me like, too. oh, I'm sorry. I'm not, no, leave them there. I'm loving that. I yeah. know. It's awesome. It's so good. Mm-hmm. But, you know, this is one of the things of like, what makes life, what makes your habitat, you know, where you can thrive, where yeah. you can rest and recover, where you can recoup all of those things. And, you know, like I said, it's, I, I remind myself when Stanley has opened up all the cabinets and now I now have to put child locks back on them because I don't have a toddler yeah. or, but I do have a very smart persistent dog persistent, yeah. Um, who likes to do those things when that's how he likes to uh, deal with his energy when we're gone yeah, yeah. is he likes to get into cabinets. He may not 
Like he likes to get into our Tupperware cabinet and just toss all the Tupperware onto the ground. Like I should take a picture of it. And it's like a rocker on a binge in a hotel room and they just like thrash the room. And I come home and I'm like, what the is this? He's just see him throwing Tupperware. Like, no, he just throws Tupperware around. Like, oh, and like the lids might break only because he's tossed it, but yeah, not because yeah, he's yeah. chewed it, right? Oh, um, and so, you know, but then, you know, I'm snuggling and 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 he helps me in so many different ways that I'm like, it's a net oh, yeah. pot, like net positive. You know, yeah. Yeah. it's a net positive. And so I I tend to that's been a really nice lesson for me in life in general. Yeah. You know, like Yeah, when we got yeah, when we got nothing. Ella, we got her she was a multi poo, Maltese poodle mix, and that was kind of by accident. I had gone to this place to look at a Havanese, because those are supposed to be hypoallergenic as well. Mm-hmm. And that having ease in there was just dominating all the other dogs. And, you know, I'm like, I don't want to dominate. And then it went up to Ella and dominated her for a little bit. And then she just got to the point where she's like, Pow! and then he backed away and then she calmed down again. And so we ended up getting her. And Maltese are bred for royalty in Malta to sit on people's laps. And that ended up being perfect. I mean, poodles do that too. They're a little more active, but that was her mission in life was to snuggle us. So that I realized that's what we love. I mean, that's sort of what we need. We need that little baby. So yeah, yeah. do your research. And even if you're going to get a mixed breed dog, if the um, they have these DNA tests you can do now, like if you've gotten a mixed breed dog, if you've done our rescue, oh, really? you oh. swab the inside of their cheek and then you send it off and they'll tell you what it, the composition is. And some you can tell like what the dominant breed is, but some have been real surprises because we always assume that both parents are purebreds, but it, they could be Heinz 57 as well. And then you can find out what the dominant breed is. And sometimes that can help a little bit with knowing what the temperament is. It's, sort of it's like that. It's like that. Um, what is that for humans? That ancestry? Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, it's yeah like I have that. 20, ancestry.com or um, uh, 23andMe is the 23 one. 23andMe. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah I, it's a, dogs now. I yeah. wanted to do that. I wanted to give those that as a gift to my mother, but um, then I found out that they use the information from your DNA for like yeah. bigger things and other things. And I was like, yeah. Oh, I get permission <laughs> to do that because I'm like, go for it. I, I'll write out, they'll every once in a while, they'll question and say, do you have any new medical things? I'm like, yes, actually, I do. I, I, it, oh, it cool. contributes to a database that helps research. Yeah. So, but anyway, yeah, That's a, I don't know what crazy. they're doing with the doggy DNA what what things they're up to with that but yeah it's interesting, interesting. all I know kinds lots of stuff of... now that you can do with pets that you couldn't do before i've had a client that has had hamsters and the one bad thing about pets is they just don't live long enough we tend to outlive them unless you get a parrot or a tortoise oh. you know they live forever oh. um but he uh sort of like people get into legos he had those little habit trail things. He had one room where it was so cool. He, he took, this was before video conferencing, but he brought pictures to show me. And he had enough of them. He was very sad when one, he would lose one, but he'd always have five or six of them. And they lived in this room that was like 10 by 10 that had these massive habit trails. And it was, he just loved going in there and watching them. He was probably, I think he might have been autistic. <laughs> uh, I love it. And I thought that'd be so cool. I would hate to maintain that, but I would totally go to someone's house and just watch those hamsters. Oh, that's exactly where my mind went. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. Who's cleaning? One of the most viral sites on TikTok that's live all the time has four of these open wheels that they just spin on. And you'll see one running and then another one will jump on there. And every once in a while, they'll hit each other and they go flying off. And people watch it all the time. I watch it all the time. Totally. Have you seen there are these there's these other videos where they make mini food for hamsters and totally. then they give it yeah. to them? Yeah. Yeah. I don't I I am fascinated by those things. Like yeah. I could I don't know why, but even like the little frying pan is like a tiny little like but it's, I think that's our that's that animal thing that we that's that so fantasy cute. of like the ratatouille, right? Those little animals. Oh the Yeah, the ratatouille, houses. yeah. Totally. I think that we, you know, we as neurodiverse folks really get into those things. And like, I haven't mentioned it, but people who do furries that dress up oh, yeah. as furries, I know an awful lot of people who are neurodiverse that do, that are in the furry crowd too. So I think that there's some sort of, there's something that that fulfills and helps us with. People really yeah. get into it. Right? Yeah. I just saw a sign or a, a frame sign for your house and it says, we speak our dog's thoughts here. Nah. <laughs> I and I was, I, 
Darn we had a whole voice for like, Ella. We still do. Oh it. yeah, we have yeah, a voice yeah. for Stanley as well. Yeah, it yeah, usually yeah. it usually involves judgment and f bombs and an English accent. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. No, Ella kind of had whatever. Like if you run into something, and like my wife would say, "Are you, oh you're okay?" I'll go, "I'm okay." She has like a little bit of a blood nerd. I'm okay, mama. You know, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you know, we – for those of you – you know, if you're listening to this and you feel yeah. so inclined, yeah, tell us what your animal is. Yeah, or you don't yeah. have to be an animal lover. I mean, like, yeah. it's fine. You can be an animal like, lover and not have an animal and just tell right. us what you too. You yeah. could just watch dog Instagram videos yeah. or TikTok videos. Like, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. I mean, I don't – something populated my feed, which was like just like mommy otters – hugging their oh babies. My God, so I don't cute. know why that started to come. I don't even know. I don't even those I, do. There there's been research that shows watching those images gives us an oxytocin rush. And that's it's a so common sweet. chemical neurochemical. Yeah. Yeah. We love that. Stuff. Or those like really fluffy puppies like um that like are so round and they don't know and they just roll off steps. They fall off the steps. They fall and yeah, roll off steps. Yeah. I mean like things like yeah. that like I could but watch for finally a very found long time. those are Tibetan mastiff puppies. And those dogs get they're enormous, fluffy, but those yeah, those are those little teeny Tibetan mastiff puppies. They literally look like little fluff balls. Yeah, and when, when they get they're big, puppies, they just, look like yeah. giant fluff balls. They look like oh. giant maned um, lions. They're huge, so cool. Well, they're, they're mastiffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They. Wow. So go on if you do. If you have pets, let us yeah. know. If you go on uh, sites to just look at pets all day, let us know if you do that, and let us know if this helps kind of normalize your pet fetish if you will i, I shouldn't say fetish because that has a a sexual connotation. connotation with it Just yeah your, pet, your ism your petism that your you is love. yeah like your love of your animal yeah, and yeah. you know and and maybe what your animal does for you if you have them um a picture we'd love to see i know too. it's so they're mm -hmm. so sweet anyway yeah. um all right marvels um we will See you in the next episode. As Dana says, be good to you. Bye, everybody.